Assalamu alaikum, everyone. We are excited because we posted in our community tab that we're doing a Q&A. And it's been a while since we've done a Q&A. I think last summer was like the last time we did a Q&A. <laughs> yeah, so we're excited, but at the same time, we're kind of, I don't know. I don't know what the questions are, so. Yes, so we're gonna look at them right now. And I also said for you guys to like the questions that you wanted to hear about the most. Ooh. Okay, there was, this is the number one question that was liked. Okay, here are you we ready? go. Let's just dive right into this. <laughs> so I'm going in blind, she knows what the questions are. Okay, so for Will, if you hadn't met Sana, do you think you would have made your way to Islam? Yes, because I believe in predestination. I believe that what is written for a person is written and there's no way that you can avoid it. Um, but did you believe that before you were Muslim? That's the thing. Uh, I believe that things happen for a reason, but I didn't know what the reason was. Yeah. Um, I think that it, it's one of those things, right? Like we talk about it and like we talked about it with our friends actually mm -hmm. not too long ago that like, just imagine in order to get to where you are right now, everything in your life had to be exactly the same. Because if, if if your mom went left instead of right, yeah, I know you wouldn't be here. Literally, right? Every little every thing. every single generation along the way, uh, it's so mm -hmm. baffling when you think. Um, mm -hmm. And then yeah, I mean, when, if you start to look at actual biology, then it's like even more convincing to me that everything plays out exactly the way that it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So I believe that that I would have found this path um, without her. Um, I don't know how that would look like, obviously, because I'm not a fortune teller, so I have no idea. But I do believe that I would have eventually become Muslim. God would have guided me to the path that I'm on at this point. Awesome. And then the same person asked for me, what are some future design ideas for hijabs? I'm wearing one of them. <laughs> We're hoping to launch a really gorgeous black tie-dye line in June. So stay tuned for that. I'm telling you, these colors are oh, And they will so ex pretty. exclusively be available at Holt Renfrew on the 24th, 5th, and 6th of June. Just saying. He just leaked some information. He just leaked some information. You Whoops. guys you guys have been asking when we're doing another meet and greet. And yes, it's coming soon. It's going to be at the Square One Mall in Mississauga at the Holt Renfrew store on June 24th. June 25th and June 26th. We're going to be there all three days with our hijab line. And yeah, come and But see if us. you're watching this after the 26th of June, then just ignore everything you just heard. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so this is the next uh, most asked question. I want to know the struggles that Will went through while converting to Islam. How did you feel? How did you manage to keep this big commitment? Um, it was difficult. It wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's... It, Especially with the narrative pushed by the media in the uh, in the Western world about mm -hmm. Islam, like after 9/11, and, and what you see, um, even to this day, you see the misinformation. You see the you see the treatment of the Palestinians in yeah. in Palestine um, by the you know the Zionist forces, and then you see the media, and it's like, oh, poor Israelis, uh, and and mm. the the brutality that is imposed upon the Palestinian people in their own land, in their own homes. Mm -hmm. But in the West, it's like. Oh, they're terrorists that's why mm -hmm. right so it was very difficult in that time you know because I, I became Muslim in 2009 which is you know still during the the, the Iraq war Afghan war um, you know Muslims are terrorists so on and so forth all these different things yeah. happening so uh, some of the struggles I mean yeah the, the issue with the fact that all of my friends um, are or were you know the type of people that were partying and drinking and you know doing all kinds of other things and that wasn't it's not you know a good place or an environment for someone who's trying to change their life and become a better person um, you know family you know same thing that when your family is very much anti-religion anti anti mm -hmm. uncle anti, anti, uh, anti yeah. uh, religion then it becomes much more of a struggle because you don't want to lose your family but you also have to hold on to your faith so there's definitely the 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 confrontation that comes about because of that so i think that you know i've been blessed that I never had to go through a lot of the really bad situations because my family wasn't religious. It wasn't like, oh, you're changing from you know this religion that we've followed for the last 500 years yeah. uh, and going into this you know heathen religion of the East. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you were atheist. Yeah, so, so it, it wasn't like a, a I'm huge... atheist. And my parents always they didn't 
they never believed in organized religion. And to me, myself, I don't believe in organized religion either. I think that a lot of it is meant to control people. I think that a lot of it is, is a creation of people. Um, but I believe in God. My parents believed in something, some higher power. They just didn't know what to believe. So it wasn't that hard, I guess, you know, when you explain it in such a way that in Islam, God is, is something that you can't comprehend. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I had, I had it, it was lonely, you know, for a couple of years for sure. Um, but again, uh, yeah, again, at the end of the day, I mean, so many people go through so much worse. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. Very long winded answer to a, to that question. But it's not, it's, it's okay. not, it's not a short question. <laughs> Are you guys going to move to a Muslim country? And if so, which one? And also have you experienced Islamophobia living in Canada? So we have questions. no immediate plans to move to a Muslim country. However, we've we always would, wanted we to. We would love to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've mentioned it actually in previous Q&As that our dream country would be Malaysia. Yep. We fell in love with Malaysia when we went there on our honeymoon and it's been on our minds ever since, but it's very hard to move there as a as an immigrant. Yeah. So Yeah, it is. But unless there's some hookups on here. There's some hookups. Some government officials, you know, you can't Call us. <laughs> skirt skirt through a visa or, you know. <laughs> That would be awesome. Um, and have you experienced Islamophobia living in Canada? I have, not a lot, but a little bit. And I'm, I'm grateful that I haven't uh, experienced anything extreme. Yeah. What about you? No. No, you're no. a white Muslim. It's, it's I'm a white dude with a beard get by. and sometimes I wear flannel. So yeah. good luck trying to tell me apart <laughs> from most other Canadians. I'm probably walking around drinking maple syrup at the same time. True. So. Yeah. Uh, next question. What would you think is the best thing to do if your parents are forcing you to wear hijab against your will? Educate. I'm so sorry. Educate yourself. Educate your parents. La ikraha fid yeah. There's no compulsion in this way of life. That in order for someone to love something, it has to be organic and it has to be because they genuinely love that thing. Mm -hmm. And if the whole purpose of religion is to not force things upon you, rather to lay out guidelines for you, in order for you to actually want to do those things, you have to want and love it yourself. Yeah. So for me, I didn't grow up wearing hijab. My parents never forced me to wear it. In fact, there was a period of time where my dad said, do not let them wear hijab because it was after 9-11. There was a lot of stuff going on. We had some threats and stuff like that. And it was just not the best environment to do it. Um, however, I would say that given all of that, the fact that they didn't force me, I came to love it myself. Exactly. And I think had I been forced, I think I wouldn't have the same passion and genuineness for it. So mm -hmm. for our girls, for instance, um, there is no force at all to wear a hijab and they literally just out of the blue on a Tuesday will be like, I want to wear a hijab today. And yeah. I'm like, oh. Okay. They, I want to wear it to gymnastics. Or, I want to wear know. it out to school. I want to wear it to the mall. And they just genuinely love to wear it. So I would say that's kind of how you should progress mm -hmm. into wearing hijab. And no one should force you because there is no force exactly. in Islam. So, so. yeah, you got to educate yourself and you have to educate your family. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if, if what they're trying to get you to do is religious, yeah. they need to know that according to the religion, there's a correct way to do it. Yeah. Next question. Give me some reasons how your marriage has increased your faith being a Muslim and how much things you've learned from each other. <sighs> how has it increased? Increased in faith? Yeah. I, f I feel like when you become married um, and you have the same faith and you have the same beliefs, it's really easy to hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. Like waking up together to pray Fajr, um, like to pray Maghrib or Isha together, mm -hmm. you know, just like different things like that. I feel like... It, like it's more fun to participate in faith activities mm. because you have each other, you know? Um, I think when you're alone, it's just not the same. Yeah, it's more difficult. I always like to yeah. use the pyramid scheme that mm -hmm. when you're two people, that the closer you are to God, the closer you are to each other. Yeah, totally. Because again, you share that, that spiritual connection mm -hmm. that we both share um, is something so much stronger right you know and, and it helps us we've, we've again we've gone through a lot of adversities in our you know our marriage and, and stuff in our, mm -hmm. in our life in our lives just in general and that connection with god uh, is something that always mm -hmm. kind of helps to uplift us and, and help us to get through those situations yeah. and then they said like what are some things that you've learned from each other i learned that men and women are certainly not equal <laughs> as if i didn't know that before when you witness a, a woman give birth multiple yeah. times you understand that man you like to think that you're tough guys but you're, you're not you're not tough you're not. for sure yeah and i've definitely learned to appreciate his side of things as well she's not going to tell you because she doesn't have anything to say <laughs> i do 
<laughs> I have a lot of things, but you know what I mean. Like no, we you don't. Le- you no, learn- we don't. Let's hear it. You learn so many things about each other. Like men are very tough and very, very like I guess you could say like loyal. Like I've seen a side of him that I never saw until he became a father. Um, it's it's actually crazy because you don't think that there's this like lion hiding inside of him but there like totally is it's it's in there somewhere and i've seen it i I saw it come out not that long ago so anyways there's there's a lot of things um a couple more questions (laughs) will what was one of the hardest things about islam for you and sana what was one thing that you would want to tell people about islam that isn't well known so what's one of the hardest things about Islam when you first like became Muslim? Uh, probably the hardest thing was having to discipline myself when nobody's watching, mm. right? Because nobody's watching me get up to pray at five, four o'clock in the yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody's watching the food that I'm eating. Nobody's mm. watching. It, it's literally that self, yourself. self-accountability that, you know, God is not standing beside me looking at me, but I have to have that consciousness that that God is, you know, always watching. Yeah, exactly. So that's probably the hardest part yeah. was inculcating that in my yeah. life. I like it. And what was one thing that you'd want to tell people about Islam that isn't well known? I would say that women are not oppressed. I know it's such a like stereotypical thing to say about Islam. But there's still so many people that leave comments on our videos, whether it's on YouTube or on TikTok, like, oh, I feel so sorry for her. Oh, the male controlled religion. A lot of people say that. People don't realize that I make choices on my own and I choose to dress like this because I want to. And just, there's just so many things like that. So I would say the number one thing is just the misconceptions that people have about women mm-hmm. in our religion. Okay, let's do one more because I know we're getting pretty uh, over time. So I'm going to just pick one more here. Oh, someone asked about your your, uh, DNA results. We just posted that video. So go and check it out. I'll link it in the description down below. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions for who is struggling to complete their prayers? That's a good one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Understand why you're praying. I mean, that's the biggest thing is that, again, when you try to tell someone you have to pray, but Mm -hmm. why am I praying? Yeah. Well, what benefit do I get from it? Yeah. Um, what, do you understand why you're supposed to pray? Do you understand the, the benefit that God gives you in doing that? Um, you know, there, and there's so many, right? Like I talked about, mm-hmm. uh, our, our prayer is literally is like meditation slash yoga slash, you know, like so many different so things, many things within that. And, and we're, the reason that we're doing it um if there's many different reasons but let's just take for example why do we pray five times a day right why isn't it just once a day to well, center yourself exactly because mm-hmm. throughout the day we're going we're getting wrapped up in our work and our family and all of these sort of things and the last thing usually that we're thinking about is that oh i have some religious responsibility that i'm mm-hmm. supposed to be connecting myself with god so that's mm-hmm. why the first thing we do when we wake up in the morning is we pray mm-hmm. um you know your day Mid-day. starts to, yeah your day starts to get going crazy whatever and then no stop come back take the time and five minutes again. just pray and then again and, and then again, again again and the last thing you do before you go to sleep is you pray yeah. so it's that reminder um and if we're struggling to pray um we should understand that there's so much benefit in it we're mm-hmm. standing before god it's mm-hmm. the it's the one action that we do in our lives that grounds us uh, in our faith that when our head is prostrated to the ground there's no bigger form of submission um and and when when we do that and we spend the time and not rush our prayer that's another another thing is don't don't just try to rush through it because you're not going to get a benefit from it Mm -hmm. and i would say another thing uh, if you're technologically savvy set an alarm and treat it like it's part of your schedule so if you are at work set an alarm so that you know exactly what time it's time to pray and treat it like it's part of your schedule day. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think when you actually have it in your schedule, you'll actually feel bad if you skip your prayer. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at that on your schedule or it goes off and you intentionally ignore it, then it's like, oh, like Mm -hmm. you actually start to feel that guilt. And when you actually start to feel that guilt, then you become more inclined to never want to miss it. Mm -hmm. And alhamdulillah, like it's become so easy to pray five times a day because it's become that routine. Mm -hmm. Um, But for for you, like if you haven't done it before and five is too much, start with just three, start Mm -hmm. with two, start with one and do that for a week and commit to that. And then Mm -hmm. once you do that, add another one, add another one, add another one every week um, until you're doing all five. And then uh, inshallah, like you won't leave your prayer behind. Think about it like this, right? Just mm-hmm. ask yourself, who is the most beloved person in your life? Mm-hmm. So maybe you're a kid, maybe mm-hmm. you're married, whatever it might be. So 
just think about this for a second that 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 one beloved person in your life they're going to phone you on this particular day at this particular time and they do it every day now imagine you just skipped that you just ignored that did you think about how that would make that person feel mm -hmm. right uh, you know you skip another time it's you're going to distance yourself from that person maybe they just stop calling you mm -hmm. right so that that genuine connection that you're picking up the phone and you're you're yeah. you're talking and you're connecting uh, same thing right that without that connection to god that we have mm -hmm. as muslims we just become further and further until the point where it's like ah whatever i don't i don't need to pray i don't need to do this i don't need to do this so the, yeah. the, definitely i mean our, our prayer is our, our fundamental pillar of islam um, something that we we cannot skip, we cannot miss, we cannot give up, we cannot leave it off, no matter what anybody else might think about it. So just remember that it's what we do, it's what makes us who we are, and the more we do it, the more we will feel the appreciation for it. Definitely. I hope you guys enjoyed this short little Q and A. Hopefully, there was actually hundreds of mm -hmm. comments, so hopefully we can do this like maybe weekly and just kind of like make our way through those questions because mm -hmm. there's a lot of really good ones and answer them for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave us a comment down below and like this video. It really helps us out, and we'll see you guys next time. Yeah, definitely. Bye for now, everybody. Assalamualaikum.